Does that feel like a really long time ago now? It feels like a forever ago. Yeah, it, forever. it kind of is a long time ago. If four months class is a long time. <laughs> yeah, it feels like years and years ago, and that was only a few months ago. It's yeah. really strange. And what was it like to get a standing ovation from someone like Simon Cowell? It was all right, you know. Kind of got better every time it happened. I know. Didn't it? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, no, that's it's really cool because you watch it like on the X Prize and Prince Got Talent all the time. People get like standard ovations, and then you never actually think it's going to happen. And then when it does, you're like, oh, this is <laughs> this is all right. And I mean, obviously, the kind of controversy with you guys was Simon suggested that you go your separate ways, yeah. but. Jonathan, you stood up and said, no, nope, it came as a duo. Good. Was that quite difficult to stand up for someone like Simon Cowell? Not really. I mean, it was, ju it was just a simple thing of saying, no, we'd already had the discussion about what would happen if that happened, because obviously we'd seen the shows before. We knew that that kind of thing did happen. Mm. So it was just a simple thing of sticking to my guns. Yeah. And obviously changed his tune, pardon the pun, by the end of it. Yeah. And how did that feel pun. for you, Charlotte? Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> I think that was like the peak moment of the whole Britain's Got Talent thing, personally. I just think that, um, yeah, because it doesn't happen very often that Simon Cowell goes back on his words. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. How would you guys describe your friendship? Because he said that was one of the most important things um, about you guys working as a duo. Well, we've, we've, we've coined it down to a, a term, basically. Yeah, let's which go with is, the term. Um, it's a brotherly-sisterly relationship. Yeah, really. it's really weird. It's like... Um, Whenever people go, we don't. No one's really ever got the friendship. It's no. very bizarre. I don't. I don't personally get it myself. <laughs> we just kind of like we'll have things in common that other people just wouldn't talk about. Do you ever get on each other's nerves, like brothers and sisters? Yeah, of course we do. Yeah. But like, we never, we never actively like argue about anything. Yeah. We just sort of annoy each other, and then like a couple of minutes later, we'll just be like, oh, I've been fun yeah. and laughing. Like brothers and sisters, because if you live, it's like we live together because we Pretty love each other much. so much. And if we're with people that much, obviously, like they only have to do one thing, and you should be like, okay, too much. <laughs> but then you get over it, and it's fine. <laughs> So, Jonathan, you spoke recently about how, you know, before the show started, you had very problems, you had low self-esteem and yeah. self-harming and things like that. Since Britain's Got Talent, how has that changed that part of your life? <laughs> Immensely, I mean... Look, we're in this, like, gorgeous room, just... I'm doing an interview <laughs> about, like, the things that have happened in the past. I mean, you know, it's just I try and look, look on it in sort of a positive light because from there, now I'm here. But so, I mean, with your new album, you do have classical, obviously it's all sung classically, but you've got some pop songs in there, like, you know, yeah. you've got a news cover in there. Yeah. What was that like for you guys? Really it's, cool. Yeah, it was, it was weird because it's not like straight classical, it's like classical crossover. So it's kind of not exactly classical music. So it opens it up to a lot more people, which is like, I think why we both enjoyed recording Muse because it's a song that people that would never really listen to classical music would listen to, and then suddenly it's got this whole new turn on it, and they kind of want to listen to it because they'd known it from before. So it's like, yeah, it was cool. Do you guys prefer to sing classical, like straight classical, or these kind of modern contemporary twists? What do you Whatever prefer comes our way. Yeah. I, I sing mostly musical theatre, to yeah. be fair, if I was just jamming. Bumps, what's, your, what so. kind, what's like your ultimate musical theatre? <sighs> Les Mis. Yeah. Les Mis by far, by long shot, is the most amazing musical. Ever. Is that your dream then, to be in Les Mis? Oh my god, yeah. <coughs> Eponine is calling, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's important for people of your age to kind of be flying the flag for classical music, because like, like you said, not a lot of people mm. listen to classical music at your age. Yeah, I think totally. it's just something different. Like, I think it's good that people that are younger listen to it, because it's kind of got this label of you can only listen to it when you're older and more mature, and I think that's... It's not true. Not true, just because you can, right. you can sing it and like it at any age, and I just think that people just need to kind of open up to a bit wider yeah. range of music more. So now that you've recorded your first album, do you guys think this is it for you guys, your music all the way? Who knows? Well, definitely music all the way. Yeah. I, I never want to stop doing music. Yeah, yeah just, it's kind of like we, we, we spoke about it before, like, in this like, past six months, our lives have changed so much. If they changed again in the next six months, it's like who knows where you could be in like, even just a year's time, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's crazy.